Just look around outside and you can see why many of us are in a summer mood. Everything looks so green. Maybe we've had a few moments with the lawnmower, but we hope the reward is a time to play, maybe even with the family dog. Those two items have a huge impact on the quality of water. Our first look this week is a part of our two-year project to report on issues surrounding our water. Let's check out the livable lawn concept. Lawn season is in full effect. We're watering, mowing, and even feeding our lawns to maintain that pristine golf course-like carpet of grass that will impress the neighbors. But that dream lawn might not be the best choice. It just doesn't need to be the default vegetation in a landscape. University of Delaware professor Susan Barton studies how to manage landscapes to reduce the impact our yards have on the environment, especially on water. If you think about it, the best way to cleanse the water is to let it flow through the soil and down through the rocks and by the time it gets to the groundwater it is as pure as it could be. The best way to let that water stay on site to get cleansed? Variety. Alternatives to lawn give you more biodiversity. They also clean water much better than lawn will. They cause the water to stay in one place and seep in through the soil, which is a lot more effective. A prime example of that variety, this massive meadow at Longwood Gardens. It's probably the best thing that happened to landscapes in this area in a long time because if people see that Longwood Gardens can do it and it's a popular landscape form at a place like Longwood, it's very likely that people will start accepting it as a landscape form that they can use in their own home landscape. In addition to writing a series of pamphlets on this topic, Barton is also part of Delaware's Livable Lawns program, which certifies lawn care professionals, training them on proper techniques, especially not over-fertilizing. My name is Bob Finicaro. My company is Finicaro Landscape Company. Bob Finicaro is one of those Livable Lawn certified professionals. The new word is less is better. And there's a lot of old ideas out there about fertilizer. You know, everybody wants a green lawn, but it isn't just putting a lot of fertilizer down. The Livable Lawn program also offers tips to the do-it-yourselfers, specifically on over-fertilizing. You're over-applying it. So what's going to happen if you over-apply it to the street? A hard surface, it's going to run down and it's going to make it into the streams. If you over-apply it on the land, it's going to go down and it's going to affect the water underneath. So this is why we're concerned about putting the proper nutrients down, okay, not excessive amount. But there's only one problem with that. Most fertilizer sold has too much nutrients, which contributes to problems downstream. Retailers will stock and sell what you buy. And the trouble is right now, we've got high nitrogen fertilizers. We have phosphorus that they're selling because they always did it. Because he orders in bulk for his business, Finicaro can get the right mix of chemicals. He says if enough people ask for a similar mix, stores will be more inclined to stock it on their shelves. And there's another culprit when it comes to lawn runoff, man's best friend. So you figure 80 million dogs times half a pound a day, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a, that can really build up in time. That half a pound she's referring to? Yes, you guessed it, dog poo. Well, basically every time it rains, any dog waste that's left in the ground, it gets slowly dissolved and broken down and it actually, you know, mixes in with that rainwater and it gets washed into storm drains or into streams that are nearby. That's right, not picking up after your dog can cause big problems for the quality of our water. Animal waste accounts for 20 to 30 percent of water pollution in America, says the U.S. Geological Survey. So as it gets carried there, you know, it takes with it any parasites, um, any bacteria, and a lot of people don't realize that um, dog waste isn't really a fertilizer like cow or horse manure is. What it does is the nitrogen in it actually makes the algae bloom. And as far as fixes go for cleaning Delaware's water, this is one of the easiest. This is such an easy, cheap and simple fix. You know, just grab a bag, pick up your dog waste, put it in a garbage can or empty it into, you know, your toilet without the bag and flush it. Either way, it will go somewhere where it gets handled properly. 
State studies show that about 12% of the coliform bacteria in the Pike Creek watershed, for instance, is due to dog waste. The partnership for the Delaware Estuary has been a part of an effort to get more dog owners to clean up after their pets. They've placed 46 bag dispensers at parks and neighborhoods in the watershed, potentially removing more than 18,000 piles of well, poo from being washed downstream. So there's one more tip that, that could actually uh, reduce yard work that's, and help the water? That's right. It's, a, it's sort of a win-win. Uh, Bob Finicaro, who you saw in our piece, recommends mm -hmm. leaving your lawn at a height of four inches, which will help your lawn stay healthier and keep more water on the site where it can be filtered through the ground uh, rather than running off. So, you know, less lawn mowing is good in my book. Yeah, interesting tip. Okay, thanks, Mark. Our clean water reporting is part of a two-year tri-state commitment to this topic that you'll see on TV, online, and on WHYY-FM.